yard line. And their quarterback is Jared Stidham. What a journey it's been for the junior and Under Armour All-American coming out of high school. He goes to Baylor, had a promising freshman season cut short by injury. Then Art Bryles was let go. Stidham transferred, went to McClellan Community College in Waco, taking online classes, running scout team at a local high school, wow. transferred to Auburn where he was the SEC Newcomer of the Year a season ago, and he has said this will be his final game. He'll turn his attention to the NFL Draft after the bowl game. Ryan Davis on first down, Auburn's all-time leader in catches, as we check down with Roddy Jones. Well, Manish, there's been a number of changes for this Auburn team since the season's ended. The most notable one has been Gus Malzahn taking over the play-calling duties. There was a lot of talk since the season ended about his job security, about his buyout, and this is essentially him taking a bet on himself. He told us that he knows that the perception of the, of the win or loss in the bowl game can affect how you feel in the offseason. He showed his team the last minute of the UCF game before this game to make sure that they remember what that felt like after a 10-win season. It didn't feel good, and he hopes they're ready to come out and play today. Now Malzahn, one of the coaches that will be on the hot seat going into next year, and his team facing a third and short on their opening drive. Chandler Cox, the motion man. Stidham takes a step forward. Now floats one to Whitlow down the sideline. Whitlow cuts it back, middle of the field. Touchdown, Auburn, Jatarvius Whitlow, his longest catch of the season. 66 yards. Right here, you'll be able to see the linebackers in coverage here, he just gets picked on the outside edge. Wasn't quite able, and that's Jalen Alexander, who was supposed to be in coverage. Great job from Stidham of identifying the matchup. And I believe the, the play fake with the draw is what drew them in. And then now you allow yourself to get it to one of your more dynamic playmakers, and the rest is history. T touchdown, Tigers. PAT by Anders Carlson is good, and a fast start for Auburn. As Roddy said, Gus Malzahn officially taking over the play calling duties an impressive opening drive three plays and a touchdown this Auburn team started four and one had the big win against Washington in the season opener when Jared Stidham was perfect reached number seven in the AP poll then the wheels started to come off the Tigers stumbled to the finish line going seven and five in the regular season but four of the five losses where the team's ranked in the top 20 of the final college football ranking. So you say, okay, they lost to quality teams. But again, this was a program that a year ago was on the verge of reaching the college football playoff. And the aspirations and the expectations on the Plains is to be a championship contender. Yeah, Tiger fans don't want to hear who they lost to. <laughs> you know, they want to hear that this is a Auburn team, and it should be, that competes with those teams year in, year out. And the hardest part of being Auburn is that you look right across the straight, the, the state, and you see Alabama, which is at the height of their program. And so I definitely think that, yeah, you can make all the excuses, and I don't think Gus has done that. He's fronted it right on and said, you, when you coach at a place like this, the expectations are certainly high. He's embraced them, and now you see him as the play caller coming out here very quickly and scoring an early touchdown. Carlson to kick it off. And this is Rondell Moore. First touch for the dynamic true freshman who takes it across the 20-yard line before being stood up. David Blau, the fifth-year senior quarterback for Purdue, playing in his final collegiate game for the Boilermakers. Young man who's huge in the community. He's gone on seven missions to South Africa, volunteering at AIDS orphanages. Proposed to his girlfriend, Melissa, in May. He does card tricks. He's a phenomenal ping pong player. Uh, but Ahmad, I will say, for the wedding, he's going to have to work on some of his dance moves. The dance moves aren't quite there. We have video of that coming later. You see the 300-yard games. Only Drew Brees has more wow. in a Purdue uniform. Rondell Moore on the outside. And shoved out of bounds by Jamel Dean. Only a yard, second and nine. What does Purdue have to do against this Auburn defense, which again is so stout up front? Well, you gotta, you gotta get Rondell the ball in various ways. There's no question about it. They're expecting him to get anywhere from 15 to 20 touches. 
And I think to neutralize that defensive line, you have to run perimeter runs, stretches, outside zones, because if you're running right up the middle, they're going to eat that up. Auburn bringing some pressure. Blau taking a shot downfield. A lot of contact between Igben Ogany and Terry Wright. No flag on the play, and it'll set up a third and long. And the chess match to watch when Purdue has the football. Purdue play caller and head coach Jeff Brom against Auburn's defensive coordinator Kevin Steele. Steele was telling us he has to be careful when to bring pressure and when to drop. Well, I think it's coming here. Yeah, you know, early on, I think you want to see how Blau is going to respond. A four-man rush. Isaac Zico with a first down for Purdue and takes it out of bounds at the 42. And he's here's the best part of Plow's game in my opinion. Since we've had him early in the year versus Boston College, his ability to identify. I think this kid has an NFL quality talent. He's very aware, very astute, understands concepts, that time finding underneath, knowing that they had dropped people away from coverage and found the open's target. I think that's where Blau has improved the most and really made himself a fine player. That's Moore in motion. He gets it on the pop pass. Rondell Moore exploding through the hole and picks up 11 for a Purdue first down. He's just a difference maker. The, the explosive nature of this young man. And then you watch him and you say, well, he's fast. Yeah, he's fast, but he's strong. Time and time again, he'll run through tacklers. You saw him there finishing off runs. And this coaching staff was so complimentary of not just his skill set, but they said, He's the hardest worker on our football team. That is a scary sight when you have the best and most athletic player and the hardest worker. This kid's a star in the making. Blau under pressure and he's taken down. Javaris Davis, one of the corners on the blitz. And it sets up second and long. That's a great blitz there from Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator. Just snuck that in from the backside. Blau's blind side and just too much to handle for the offensive tackle, Hermans. As he gets to the quarterback, now you're in a second and long situation. Keep in mind, this is also a blitzing situation for the Tigers. They love third and long, second and long situations to really heat up the pocket. Herman's the left tackle, missed the second half of the season with an injury. First game back. Here's Moore. Makes the first man miss. Tries to Magellan around the defense, and he is going to be dropped for a loss. Jeremiah Dinson to safety. If there was any question as to whether Auburn would be motivated, that's been answered early. Well, yeah, and once again, trying to find creative ways. This time, motion him across the field, get him on a screen. He's going to normally make the first guy miss, and if you're the Auburn Tigers defensively, you've got to rally to the football. Don't expect the first guy to tackle Rondell Moore. You've got to think that he's going to beat that guy and keep on pursuing. Moore came into the game leading the country in receptions, authored one of the best seasons by a Purdue receiver in school history. And only a true freshman. Three-man rush by Auburn. Blau with time. Nobody open. They'll take off and dropped in Auburn territory. About a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. And it sets up a fourth down. That's a great defensive series for the Tigers. You start off, you give up a big key third down. And Kevin still said it. He said, that's going to be the difficulty, knowing when to bring that pressure, when to drop back. They haven't even blitzed him yet with a five-man pressure. And so you, you think about that. If, if the Tigers can keep everything in front of them, tackle in the open field, which I think is key, which they've done this possession, they're going to have a great shot of winning this game. Auburn's been excellent at blocking kicks this season. Four blocked punts, seven blocked kicks in all. Fair catch made by Ryan Davis. Inside the 15. When you were talking about tackling Steve McNair. Oh, no, I, no, no, there was none of that. Trust me, none of that going on. <laughs> Auburn back to work. After a three-play scoring drive the first time. Cam Martin in the backfield. Stidham will throw. Nearly intercepted by Tim Kaysen, the fifth-year senior. And quite frankly, that's one he should have had. Oh, man, you talk about anticipation. And Kaysen, who the coaching staff has said, this guy has really turned it on the second half of the year. This is an outstanding play. Just cuts off the route. And, you know, that's one of those plays, though, you can't drop if you're Purdue and you're trying to get back in this ball game. You need that play to really turn the tide and to give your offense a short field.
on the ground to Martin. Has some running room right up the middle. And he picks up 13 yards. It's a first down. This is a Purdue defense missing a couple of key pieces. On the defensive line, Lorenzo Neal out for the season. Tore his ACL in the season finale. Cornell Jones leads the team in TFLs. Not starting today. We may not see him. Incomplete intended for Darius Slayton, who had Antonio Blackman beat. I'd say. I mean, he had four or five steps on him. And instead of there, just overthrew him. He, he recognized it, saw it. He took the safety away with his eyes. He looked to the opposite side of the field, comes back, has the matchup he's looking for, and that's a big one to miss. Stidham, who, who the coaches were very complimentary, and even when you watch film, like Roddy and I have, you see that he can throw an excellent deep ball. I'm a little surprised that he missed a wide open target like that. Ryan Davis in motion. The give is to Martin. As the edge cuts it upfield, lowers his head, and another nice run. That's a dozen yards, and the problem for Auburn offensively this year, the interior of the offensive line struggled. The running game has not been what we've seen in the past. This is a good sign early. They're getting a boost. Cam Martin can flat out run, and you see the ability to accelerate and to burst through the line of scrimmage and get to the second level and make things happen. Purdue rushing five, blitz picked up, Stidham downfield again. And that is a catch by Seth Williams, the true freshman, who has really come on in the second half of the season. i tell you what's so amazing about him at a 6'3", 210. This kid can run. I mean, you know, that long stride, he just continues to eat up grass and turf, and for the second time, it's just blown by the Purdue secondary. They're going to have to do something different if they're going to try to keep him in front. Tigers go quickly. Martin right up the middle. Well, guys, as Purdue has gotten a couple of chunk plays, how big is that drop to interception? I mean, Ahmad, you said it. When you're Purdue, you're trying to get back in this game. You know you're down a couple guys on defense. You have to take advantage of stuff like that. But also, with Gus Malzahn calling the plays, what have we seen? The commitment to running the football, which we, he told us we were going to see, but also the deep shots that haven't necessarily been a huge part of this Auburn offense. Absolutely. Anthony Schwartz, number five in the game. He's got great speed. That is Schwartz in motion. He gets it on the pop pass. Schwartz turns on the afterburners and pushed out of bounds after a nice pickup. Smiley knocked him out of bounds. A gain of a dozen more. And wow, the Auburn rush game to start off averaging more than 10 yards a carry so far. And I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to say that I think Gus Malzahn right now is on fire with his play calling abilities. Martin up the middle. Dropped to the one-yard line. Yeah, you'd like a bigger body in here right now, Roddy. I know Whitlow is, is their pounder. I, I'd look to see him coming to the ball game, and here he comes. Uh, I agree with you. It's six foot, 215. This guy is put together, and, man, he is physical. He's a guy that will punish you at the end of a run. And he's going to go in the Wildcat formation. Whitlow. His second touchdown of the game, the one they call Booby. A receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown. And Auburn has made quite the opening statement. They are in a great rhythm. And I think, like I said, Coach Malzahn has just really mixed it up well. I mean, he's just peppered them all over the field and then mixing in those deep shots. Keep holding those safeties high, allowing his running bangs. They come out here, they're down 14 to nothing early. Short kick, Moore had some trouble with it in the sun, and then gets popped across the 22. Booby Whitlow, two touchdowns in this game for Auburn. He fumbled back in September against Alabama State. Mom said, get down and give me 50. <laughs> he had 122 yards in that game on the ground. I love it. <laughs> Markel Jones, sixth on Purdue's all-time rushing list, picks up a couple. And Roddy, who had the 
who, who, who had a slippery ball at times. You better be glad your mom didn't ever implement that, buddy. Uh, honestly, I wish she had. I'd have been a lot stronger. <laughs> Like you said, you know, every running back goes through phases. Mine seemed to come in bunches, man. I'd have been, I'd have been like Popeye with my, with the amount of push-ups I had to do. Oh boy, he's already like Popeye. <laughs> Isaac Zico goes in motion. Play action. Lau steps up. Intercepted. Davis brings it inside the 20 and a red zone opportunity for Auburn. Yeah, if you're, da if you're David Blau there, the, the best decision would have been to just swallow this football. Yeah, you know, and he, he gets creative. You'll see it. Now, he does a good job of dipping inside of the pocket. Keep in mind that this offensive line is something that Jeff Brom has said. You know, we've got guys that give great effort. We don't have a lot of guys that are going to be playing on Sundays at this front part. And so, Blau all season long has had to try to compensate. And you see Braum there telling him now, I'm sure he's probably telling him, hey, this is not a good decision. You know, uh, we need to be able to keep the football, and especially on this side of the field. Now you give it back to a hot Auburn offense that could go up 21 to nothing. Stidham now comes under center. This is Schwartz. There you see that elite track speed. This is a young man who holds the junior world record in the 100-meter dash. Auburn knew he could run. They found out shortly after getting him on campus, he's a football player, too. <laughs> yeah, that type of elite speed really does scare you. Stidham, quarterback keeper. Stidham reaching for the end zone. Three drives for Auburn, three touchdowns for the Tigers. Yikes. Injured player down on the field for Purdue as well. And nice creativity once again. Stidham with a great decision to pull the ball. He's not known for his running ability, but he's a kid that can certainly move. And I think there's a difference between a good runner and someone who can move. He can move. And that time there showing that he had just enough athletic ability to get it in the end zone. And if you are, are Purdue now, as, as they've got an injured player down on the field, somebody on this sideline has to grab some of their teammates, rally around them and say, guys, let's calm down and let's get this thing under control. It is under further review. Brennan Thieneman is the injured Boilermaker. Younger brother of Jacob Thieneman, the starting strong safety, both came to Purdue as walk-ons. Now, Auburn, again, there were so many questions surrounding this football team after the season. Roddy told you earlier about the speculation about Gus Malzahn's job. Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator, leaves for Kansas. They bring in Kenny Dillingham from Memphis, 28-year-old, but it'll be Malzahn calling the plays, and uh, the play calling has been sublime so far for Auburn. Three drives, three touchdowns. They're looking at that previous play to see if Stidham was into the end zone. Where's the ball when the knee hits the ground? Is the knee down there? I think this there? comes back. Yeah, I think, I think it comes back. After it's reviewing right the, the play, the runner's right knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. It'll be second down and goal with the ball at the one-yard line. And with the way Auburn is going right now, you get the sense this may just be delaying the inevitable. Yeah, and you saw what worked earlier, Whitlow, and he's back out on the football field. I don't think there's any question in my mind where this ball is going. Is Once again, he lines up in the Wildcat formation. And if you're the Tigers, you, you don't get out of this package until they can stop it. Whitlow will keep it and easily into the end zone for his third touchdown of the opening quarter. And let's give some credit to this offensive line for Auburn who's struggled at times, quite frankly, whether that's protecting the quarterback or opening up creases and holes for the running backs throughout SEC play. They have completely manhandled the front seven for the Boilermakers. The AT is good, and for Purdue, 
Bennett linebacker, Noble, who is in the spotlight in our PlayStation Player Index as we have some extracurriculars after the play. 105 catches now with two today, most in the nation. Top receiver he's in special. the Big Ten. And he's like a cheat code, Ahmad. <laughs> There's no like it. I mean, he, he is. He's just brilliant. Yeah, he really is. And um, if, if we'll get a chance today at some point, I'm sure to see him cut loose. And um, spectacular season this young man has had. And Auburn's done a good job so far. They, they, you know, he's picked up yards, but they have not allowed him to get that explosive play that we know he's capable of, of making. Five wide, two of the receivers' tight ends. Blau quickly to Isaac Seco, who is dropped immediately by Jamel Dean, junior out of Florida, who began his career at Ohio State, was medically disqualified from the Buckeyes, and he came to the Plains and has turned into one of the top DBs in the SEC. Yeah, his best year. I mean, he's quadrupled his numbers in any season, and he's been reliable. And, and the, the fact is, is I think Moore has opened up more one-on-one -on -one opportunities for him, and he's taken advantage. Edge pressure again. This one caught by Moore, slips a tackle. And shoved out of bounds across the 40, a gain of 16. You look at Rondell Moore's build, 5'9", 175. He squats 600. Well, but this is how you get through a tackle like this. You know, it's his balance, his center of gravity. I mean, low to the ground, he's a smaller target to hit, but he is powerful for his size. Rondell Moore lined up in the slot, bottom of your screen. Markel Jones up the gut, broke a couple of tackles and ends up near midfield. They'll mark him actually at the 47-yard line, a gain of six. And, and these running backs, and Roddy could tell you, nobody really wants to pass pro the whole game, but Knox and Jones, that's kind of what they've been you know, relegated to because this team passes the ball so much and give them a lot of credit. They don't get a lot of touches on the football. Here is Moore. He'll throw, and that was nearly picked off by Dean. And it would have been a touchdown if he could have found Jared Sparks, and he knows it. I mean, the Auburn defense, with all the attention on Rondell Moore, if he could have passed the football here, we asked the coaching staff yesterday, how well does he pass the ball? He said he's, yeah, he's adequate here. He proved that he's less than adequate because all he has to do is get it over the top of coverage and Sparks would have ran for days in the open field. Both of these coaches have quite a few trick plays in their bag. On third down. There is Moore who brings it in for a first down for Purdue. Beautifully placed ball from David Blau and that is one of the most impressive things. They run a lot of option routes with Rondale Moore. What does that mean? If he's being covered and a guy is on the inside leverage of him covering him, right, they run him out. If they're on the outside leverage, they run him in. With those option routes, this is a, a, a system that the New England Patriots have made famous. You just run away from leverage when you have a dynamic playmaker like that, and that's what you saw there. Blau under pressure, and the throw low in the direction of Jones. T.D. Moultrie getting in the backfield. Auburn without one of its D-linemen today. Their buck linebacker, their hybrid, Nick Coe, out after surgery on his right wrist. So you'll see a lot of Moultrie and a big cat, Bryant. Moultrie looking good on that play. And Blau doing an even better job of, of not turning that into a negative play and keeping the sticks where they are. And Ahmad, what we've seen in the Purdue passing game is they've had some success on the timing throws, the three-step drops, three drops and get the ball out. Anything more than that, and he's had pressure. Blau over the middle, incomplete, intended for Cole Herdman, the tight end. And it sets up a third and long. This Auburn defense, are one of the best in the country on third downs. Uh, you know what? I keep applying pressure to the offensive right side, defensive left side. You, you've seen it all day today. There's been pressure in Blau's face early on in this ball game. A short up over there. Oftentimes they go to max protect to be able to, to add two extra blockers, your tight end and your running back. It's not working right now against this front. Uh, as they blitz there on second and long, expect them here. I think they're going to drop back in coverage and force Blau to beat him with his arm. Blau will try to do just that. Flag is down. Igben Agony on the coverage. Terry Wright was the intended receiver. The one knock that I have on Noah Igben Ogany, 
who is going to be a phenomenal player. Okay, he just moved from wide receiver. He's long, he's lanky, he's strong, he's physical. But at times, that those physicalities turn into these types of plays where he's overzealous, right? And the one thing Pass you can interference, gotta, defense, number four. Penalty will be 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Look, look I played the the cornerback position in the NFL and at the University of Texas. I wasn't an aggressive guy. I worked more with my feet. But I can tell you right now, you can't always attack and be aggressive. Sometimes you've got to be aware of your surroundings and understand the down and distance there. Don't give up a third down play when you already had the guy covered up. Just run through the play and make something happen and don't force your team into getting these silly penalties. Pass interference, not a spot foul in college. Blau has Rondell Moore in the flat. And Moore fights forward, and he's going to be close to a first down. You see that second gear, that, that stutter step. He's, he's known for it, and it will set up and dupe defenders all over the country. And, and, and it's hard to judge because you're already trying to run as fast as you possibly can to cut off his angle, which he normally destroys. And then he puts that little stutter on you to get you to pause, and he runs right by you. It is a first down. Best drive of the game for Purdue. Blau again to the air. Looking for Zico. Touchdown, Purdue! No! Zico went out of bounds, and he was the first one to touch it. Outstanding ball here from David Blau, though. One of the best parts of this game. This ball's on the money. And that's a good call by the official. Zico stepped out. Is that the receiver was forced out of bounds but did not reestablish prior to catching the pass. It's incomplete. That's the right call for yep. the officials. And, you know, you, you've got to give Jamil Dean credit here. You know, this Auburn defense, look, they're aggressive. They press, they play man to man, they're in your face, and they fight you from the moment the ball is snapped all the way downfield. And he forced him out of bounds. And, you know, as a cornerback, I used to always try to tell myself, if I can get him out of bounds, that's great for me. Um, and that time there, Dean doing a great job of, of forcing him out of the play. And Zico never reestablished position inbounds. That one off the hands of Rondell Moore. Jeff Brom told us, well, Moore probably looking at 15 to 20 touches. Man, I, I think that might be a low-end number. They're trying to go to him seemingly on every other play. Yeah, it's more like 50, <laughs> you know. But why not? I mean, if you're Jeff Brom, who give him credit. He, you know, his recruiting pitch for Rondell Moore was, hey, there's not a team in the country that can get you the ball like we can. And he said, I'm, I feel good about our ability to acknowledge that, and we have come through with that. Because I call the plays, and that's what Jeff Brom said. I call the plays, I'll make sure you get the football. And he has. Brought down by the native Nashvilleian Bryson Hopkins for a first down. Young man played his high school ball at Ensworth. That's where Purdue practiced during bowl week. His dad, Brad, former O-lineman for the Oilers and later the Titans when they moved. And dad played nine seasons in this stadium. It's a great play. Goes up and gets it. And this could be a play that changes the momentum for uh, the Boilermakers and gets them back in the game. Zico in motion. And now Blau looks to the sideline. Rondell Moore on the fly sweep. Moore, stutter step. And he is in for a touchdown. Yeah, you're looking at a superstar. And this guy will be on people's Heisman list. The stutter step, though. It, it, I, no more than I just got done talking about it, and it's so hard to defend because I'm serious. If you're not running, and giving a hundred percent, right? They're, they're just, it, did he get in here? Absolutely, that left foot crosses the line. Look, it's so difficult because you've got to be given everything you've got to catch this kid because he's so fast and explosive. And when he stutters you like that, it really causes you to pause, which now allows him to get around that corner. Rondell Moore is a very special player in the Purdue Boilermakers. He has changed the dynamic of this program. All you gotta do is uh, throw in the tape of the Ohio State game where he put on a show. 
He's the real deal, and I think he's here to stay. In his first collegiate game, Rondell Moore against Northwestern set the single-game Purdue record for all-purpose yards. That's I am born, call me Ishmael to begin your career. And we told you earlier, he is a cheat code. We were there for that play against Boston College. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how he got out of this and time and time again. He's like Houdini. You know, it's just, yeah, it doesn't matter if you got this kid wrapped up, destroys people's angles. I mean, look at how he's outrunning the secondary. I mean, we're talking the fastest players on the field, your skill guys. It does not matter. And I tell you, I've been impressed with what I see a on him from the field, but the most impressive thing is the way that his coaches talk about him. You know, they gave, they told us something yesterday that they put these monitors on players to track them, um, how fast they're going, but these monitors also track how hard you're going. Rondell Moore's during practice is 9,000. The player closest to him is 4,000. Right. So it's not just about the game. This kid is taking what he's doing in practice and it is translating into football games. They knew from day one he was going to be a superstar. He said, he's our best player day one when he walked in. He, he is a special guy. You can't talk enough about him. And I think you know, you'll continue to see this guy's name, like I said, continue to be in the front of college football. He was a big-time recruit. All the big schools wanted him. Ohio State, Alabama. At one point, Moore had committed to your alma mater, Texas. Ouch. <laughs> that one hurt. Let that one get away. <laughs> that one hurt. <laughs> this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Already four PATs in this game, 28 points in all in this first quarter, and Auburn has scored on all three of its drives, this offense roaring right now here in Nashville. Yeah, the only way to stop it is the Purdue Boilermakers have to start winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. That starts with the outside. They're giving up too many explosive plays through the air downfield. Now, if you're this defensive line, I don't care who's here, who's not here, win your matchup and prove that you deserve to play on this type of stage. Cam Martin gets the call and runs into a roadblock that's right at the like. line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, there was, there was too much open play going around as Cornell Jones, who's one of the best players on this team who's injured, um, hadn't practiced much this entire week, and is now back. And the coaching staff said, if this kid can work, he can be a very special player. The young man from Miami played there at Central. Um, sophomore, he's got all this, the talent to be good. Stidham, all day, down the seam. Caught by Slayton, and he can take this to Timbuktu. In our conversations with defensive coordinator for Purdue yesterday, Nick Holt, he said this. He said, I'm not sure if we have the speed to run with some of their elite athletes. And this is unfolding right before our eyes. Darius Slayton, I mean, He's, he's beat the brakes off of this secondary early on. I mean, he's been behind coverage multiple times. In fact, Sidham missed him once today. I mean, it's you've got to keep him in front. And, and I don't know if that means you, you play more off coverage and, and, and don't give up the big play. But whatever they're doing right now is not working. You, you come out, you get a negative play, you get a tackle for loss, and then you come back and in the secondary you give up a big play like this. This is demoralizing to a defense just as you start to get some momentum. And right now, the Tigers are licking their chops because what they see is a wounded duck, and they are going right after it. Third touchdown catch of the season for Slayton, who has a reputation for being a big-time vertical threat. And now the big plays, frankly, were AWOL in this Auburn offense for most of the regular season. Not today. We saw Booby Whitlow go 66 yards for a touchdown. We saw Slayton just now, 74 yards. Look at Stidham's numbers. Five for seven, almost 200 yards passing in the first quarter. And he's showing off that big arm. You know, and uh, our, our esteemed colleagues here at ESPN have him as the fifth best quarterback entering the draft. And the one, the, the one part of this game that you say, there's no question about it, he can make all the throws. I, I mean, his deep ball, I think, is the best part of his game. But I can tell you this much, you know, I, I also 
question whether he can elevate players around him. He's doing that today. I don't think he did that all season long, but he seems much more comfortable um, under Malzahn calling plays, and, and it's clear today right now that this offense, it doesn't appear to be that they can be stopped. Our John Deere drive recap, and that's yeah, another pretty quick drive for Auburn that we saw, but for Purdue, Rondell Moore. There's the sneaky strength, then you've got Hopkins, the Nashville native, and then more on the fly sweep for the Purdue score. Auburn really didn't take too long. They got the ball back, a bomb downfield to Slayton, and it's 28 to seven. The Tigers, more than 250 yards of offense with 2.48 to go in the quarter. DJ Knox tackled by two Tigers after a gain of just a yard. Jamie and Sherwood in there. Yeah, the only concern you have about them scoring that fast is did your defense get enough rest? <laughs> I mean, I, after a long drive like that by the Boilermakers, outside of that, I mean, right now, uh, the Tigers uh, seem to be um, clicking on all cylinders. Blau under pressure. Has Hopkins, who's driven back by Dean, and what we're seeing in this first quarter, Roddy, Auburn can put pressure on the quarterback without blitzing. All right, we don't have Roddy right now. We will have him back shortly, but same point, Ahmad. And this is a key third down here. Blau again under pressure. He'll try to run. And what you just said earlier, Nish, unfolded. That's a four-man rush. And it, he's being flushed out of the pocket. And look, this coaching staff for Purdue, they know right now that they need to recruit offensive linemen. And said they're even looking for graduate transfers to come in here. And, and now it's a fourth down situation. I, I think you go for it here. I, at the point of the ball game, this could really get out of hand yep. if you don't. And to Blau's decision there, I want to see him utilize his feet more. If they're going to drop back seven in coverage, then darn it, you gotta take you gotta take what they're giving you. I know that's not what your game always calls for, but listen, right now your team needs you and you're athletic enough to do it. Play clock is winding down, and Purdue calls a timeout, lining up to go for it on fourth down. And that's not surprising because Jeff Brom told us. Early in the season, when Purdue started 0-3, Brom put a lot of the blame on himself. He felt they were not aggressive enough. Starting with the Boston College game, which really got the season turned around, they were 0-3, absolutely smashed a BC team that yep. was ranked. You're right. That was the start of a four-game win streak. And if you watched Purdue's win against Ohio State, the biggest upset of the season in college no football, doubt. they were aggressive, they were taking chances. You saw the trick plays. It was devil-may-care football. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, you know, in talking to Blau, who I think he has to start that. He's the one that has to be the risk-taker and, and the leader of that. He said, I was, I was a little nervous. I didn't want to disappoint Coach Braum. And he said, early in my career, um, I thought that I took too, too many risks, and that's why I led the country in interceptions. <laughs> and, and he said, uh, when I started to get comfortable again and confident, everything kind of took off. And to Braum's credit, he said, I, I want this kid to cut it loose. And when he did, um, good things start to happen. I, I would go with maybe a quarterback sneak here despite there being so much meat in the middle, or they're going to run right in behind their fullback, Alexander Horvath. And another whistle. Prior to the snap, Auburn calls their first time out of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. And this is like the something. gamesmanship we were talking about. Kevin Steele, the Auburn defensive coordinator, Jeff Brom, head coach and play caller for Purdue. You know, and Ke Kevin still has great respect for Brom as a play caller. You can stream college football all season long on ESPN+. Plus. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app. As the football season winds down, Plus allows you to watch all the 30 for 30, something oh, you man. can do if you've got some time Love off during things. the holidays. They had some old Tyson fights before <laughs> the Buster Douglas 
30 for 30. So I was going through some of those old Tyson yeah. fights the last couple of weeks. <laughs> One of my favorite athletes of all time, you know, and especially just his post and um, pre-fight interviews. <laughs> those are always uh, full of gems. <laughs> always dropped a big word in there. You notice that? <laughs> Oh boy, we miss you, Mike. <laughs> Somewhere fading into Bolivian. <laughs> Fourth down and one. Horvath, number 40 in white. Big blocking back in there for Purdue. Knox. This is going to be close. I think they picked it up. That last effort there to get through and. Yeah. Good play call, and it's gutsy from Brom, and, and and that's what you have to do. You have to take risk as a play caller. And earlier we talked about the decision of him um, turning down the Louisville job and the type of trust that I think he gained from his players. First down is under further review. Indeed, they're going to review that, and rightfully so. And um, but I think the trust he's gained, you know, with his players, I, I can't imagine. You know, you turn down your dream job. The next time I see him, I'm I'm, I'm looking at him and I say, you know what, coach. I will follow you. And and Brom, who has been very candid with us in our um, ESPN crew meetings from the jump, has told us, you know, honestly about his personnel, where they set, areas where they need to improve. And um, it, it's just been impressive what he's been able to do here at Purdue early on in his uh, coaching career here. Take another look. And the question will be, is that knee down before that last lunge, right? And and I hard to tell from that angle. But I think that's what I would be looking for if, if I'm a replay official. Purdue needed to get to the 35-yard line. That's nowhere to really determine where that knee is there, and I think this play will stand. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. So if there's doubt or you can't tell, then whatever the call was on the field would stand, and the call was a first down. What you said about Jeff Brom, one of the things he told us that he was moved by last year was seniors after wins Indeed. embracing their head coach and telling him how much it meant to win a football game. This is a team that has won nine Big Ten games since Jeff Brom took over. In the previous four seasons, they were 3-30 and 30 in league play. And so many of the guys that you're seeing now the David Blouse of the world, guys on the offensive After line, review, the Marcus the Bailey's the of the field world. Stands as called, first down. So many of the players that were beaten up and were on the wrong end of some pretty lopsided defeats are now a part of the turnaround, and that's one of the reasons David Blau did not transfer. He could have gone somewhere else this year. Danny Etling went to LSU. Yep. Austin Appleby transferred out of Purdue. Quarterbacks from West Lafayette, Blau said it meant a lot. This fifth-year senior group, they had been through some pretty tough times. He wanted to see it through. And Blau did not open the season as the starter. Tossed to Knox. He thought about throwing it, and then runs into an ambush. That was a wise decision by DJ Knox as this defense really lightened it up. Richard Jabuno. Or with the stop. And that will take us to the end of quarter number one. A tour de force performance by the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> four possessions, four touchdowns. The big plays from Stidham. 37 seconds. Second and long Purdue. David Blau to the air. Checks down to Markel Jones. Who falls across the 35? It'll set him third down. David Blau, a young man who has had quite the odyssey in West Lafayette. You know, benched multiple times early in his career as a sophomore. Led the country in interceptions. 29 picks his first two years. And as a senior, he's put together one of the finest seasons by a Purdue quarterback. Third team all-conference honors. On third and ten, four-man rush by Auburn. Blau, jump pass. He's got Jones, and Jones is going to be tackled about a yard shy. If they went for it earlier on this drive, you got to assume the offense stays out of the field. I would agree, and Blau takes another shot. And in, in, in this offensive line, we knew it headed into this matchup, right? They've got their hands full. 
But when your quarterback's jersey is is this dirty <laughs> in the first half, you got to do something. And I don't know, you know, oftentimes Purdue to come back when they are getting this type of pressure, they will hold in a running back. Uh, they go max protect with a tight end or a, a tailback. They may, be go, may need to go to that there and allow their three wide receivers to try to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup because it's been a rough day for Blau. The give is to Markel Jones, and he is devoured by Derek Brown and Dontavious Russell at the line of scrimmage. It will be Auburn ball. Well, that's a highlight reel there play for, for Derek Brown. And if you don't know who this kid is, he'll be uh, one of the first players taken in the draft. Just a phenomenal force, power, and fortitude right there in the middle. At 6'5", 325 from Sugar Hill, Georgia. He is a grown man now, okay? They call him Baby Barack, too. So, And they say that because he's, he's the player that he's very congenial and um, the guy that is always aware of what's going on, they said he can be put in a football helmet or put in a tuxedo to go visit the White House. He's that versatile. That time there showing his versatility and just completely smothering the run. Yeah, he's the vice president on Auburn's student athlete advisory council. As that time, Purdue gets into the backfield with Derek Barnes. Outstanding play. Holds the team's squatting record, 590, on the SEC's Football Leadership Council. Jeez. That's part of the genesis. That's 590. Game. I think that's me, you, and Anish, and maybe even the people from our crew. He <laughs> pick up on it one time. <laughs> Jeez. I'm not helping there, buddy. <laughs> Screen pass to Slayton. Slayton breaks free. First down and more. Slayton runs past the entire Purdue defense. Are you kidding me? Ooh. He turned on the afterburners. Now, I knew this kid was fast, but geez Louise. I mean, they come back to the screen, great blocking up front, particularly from Markel Harrell. But listen, the burners there, I mean, destroy. He did his own version of Rondell Moore. We've been talking about his speed and just um, how explosive he can be in the back half of runs. Slayton today has destroyed this defense. I mean, he's had touchdowns already of 74 yards, 52 yards. Early on in this first half. Tomorrow, right here on ESPN, the college football playoff semifinals. Oh, I'm it's ready, here. baby. Four Eastern, number two, Clemson, number three, Notre Dame, Dexter Lawrence amongst the players suspended for the Tigers, and then Tua and Kyler, Alabama and Oklahoma. Big one. Did you see the Quinn and Williams almost quote when asked about <laughs> Kyler Murray? <laughs> well, Kyler uh, Murray is not that. Yeah. What was that? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm good. Don't give that kid any motivation. <laughs> Ask my alma mater. <laughs> Let's yeah, that's going to be a fun game to watch. Uh, it really is. Two of, the, two of the best seasons college football quarterbacks have ever had between Kyler and Tua, and I'm looking forward to it. Delay of game, it appears. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. A tough start, a tough first half for Purdue. Jeff Brom looking on and calling the plays on the Purdue sideline. Now, whatever happens in this game, the biggest win for Purdue this year was keeping that guy as their head coach as Rondell Moore catches the bubble screen and takes it out of bounds near the 30, a gain of four. I think you're right. And, and as an injured player's down on the field, appears to be Matt McCann. And that's uh, the right tackle. And, and I think to your point of, of Braum, um, once he feels like he gets a an offensive line, I think that's the next part of around every bend. That thing is huge. The man. Resort. Got lost in that thing we yesterday, did. man. A few times. It's like wow, and everything looks the same. So I felt like I was in the same area, but I'm not. So, <laughs> but it is. It's uh, phenomenal. We were also following our guy out of Jupiter. <laughs> which His sense of direction right. can sometimes be off. He leaves you <laughs> off the beaten path. Unintentionally, blast pass batted down. It's intercepted by Big Cat Bryant. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for Purdue. 
and everything coming up golden for Auburn. David Blau at 6'1", 205. He's going to have an opportunity, I think, to play in the NFL. But Dontavious Russell there batting the ball down. And Big Cat Bryant taking it in the end zone. This will be the question mark. You know, can he throw over the taller defensive lineman? But once again, that pressure was right in his face. And, and he's had that all day today. He's been knocked down. And this time a batted down pass uh, results in a touchdown for Auburn as they are pouring it on here in Nashville. Ahmad, Gus Malzahn told us yesterday that last year as successful as a season as it was, losing that New Year's Six game to UCF really left a bitter aftertaste in the mouths of the coaching staff and the players. This season, it's gone off the rails. This was a team that expected to contend for an SEC title. You have that big win against Washington early. You were ranked in the top 10. You finish seven and five. A lot of the fan base had changed its opinion on Gus Malzahn or doubled down on it. I understand that. You look at this first half performance, from an optics standpoint, this is pretty good for Gus Malzahn going into the offseason. 42 to seven. He's called a terrific game he so has. far. The defense has come up with a couple of turnovers. and. Now this can quiet the growing tempest on the plains. Well, here it is. They still are playing in the SEC. So, you know, this is this is this is a great start, and a, or I should say, a great end to this season and a great start for the 2019 season. But the reality of it is, is you've got some serious questions to answer. How are you going to run the football next year in the SEC, and who is going to replace Jared Stenham? I mean, those are two starts. So, the questions still lie there. I think for for Gus Malzahn and this Tigers team. And like I said, in order for them to compete in the best conference in college football, they're going to have to answer those questions first. Yeah, and you've got to figure out how to knock off Goliath and Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. Which they did a that. year ago. <laughs> Tomorrow will kick off one of the biggest college football days at noon Eastern, the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Number 10, Florida. Number 7, Michigan. It's be a fun one. Should be a defensive battle. Michigan, number one in the country. In defense, Florida just outside the top 25 at number 26. 42 to 7 Auburn, and look at the time. There is a lot of time left in this first half. Here's Knox searching for running room, not much there, only a yard. And Auburn on both sides of the ball today has controlled the game in the trenches. Uh, and, and you didn't expect them to not control them. I, I don't think that was anybody coming in, but what you expect was that maybe this offense could pepper them on the outsides, force them to tackle them in space. They haven't given up any big plays. They've kept everything in front of them, and they really have suffocated this offense despite that one scoring drive. Uh, it's been a dominant performance from the Tigers. The toss to Knox, Purdue's leading rusher. He is gobbled up after just a yard. Dontavious Russell, a four-year starter on the defensive line. Now there's NFL talent on that front four. There's also quality depth. And you've got to have it in the SEC to be able to handle the offensive linemen in that conference. And, and these guys are very active. They can move, they're agile, they're mobile. And, and their ability to dissect the plays and then finish the plays, I think, has been impressive um, this season and, and certainly today. On third down, Blau has Herdman, and he is tackled immediately. Going to be a couple of yards shy of the marker, and it would not surprise us to see Jeff Brom go for it. I think they're going to punt the football here. And you know, at this point right now, what you're trying to do is just keep your team in a positive state where you can go in the locker room and try to check in with them. I mean, because you don't know where they're at right now mentally. Physically, they are getting whipped. Mentally, you may still be able to salvage uh, the ability to come back out here and fight. It's hard. I, and I've been on, on the opposite side of, of some of these butt weapons. And it's hard to mentally stay locked and engage in a ball game, especially when it's the last of the year. This one bounces and lands at the 35. Auburn today, offensively, has had the ball for less than five minutes. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and they haven't been stopped. And so now if you're Gus Malzahn, here's the thing. 
right? Yeah, you've struggled to run the ball all season long. Is this now a time to come out here and establish your run game and, and really say, let's take control and let's let's also prove, because they've done it through the air. Yes, they've scored three rushing touchdowns inside of the red zone, but I, I think now you come out and you run the football and you prove to your players that, that this is what we're going to be next year. Now they come out throwing. Ryan Davis. And a flag at the end of the play. Dedrick Mackey made the tackle. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 21. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's on Marcus Bailey. The best player on that Purdue defense. 100 plus tackles. Second to team all conference. I think he was just trying to rip the football out. And they just, here's those hand might have got caught in the face mask there. So Auburn now at the 45 of Purdue. Davis in motion. Cam Martin gets the call. And picks up three. And, and this is what I said. Put the ball on the ground. I, I mean, I, I, it, they were so disappointing at times watching them run the football. And we asked Gus yesterday. I said, how different will this offense look as you as the play caller? And he said, oh, not much. Um, look, I, I can't say that he was being honest with us <laughs> because this offense has looked completely different from any time that I've seen them all season long. And now they go back to a Wildcat look. And I, I, like I said, I think you run the football right now. And they do just that. Booby Whitlow across the 40. Third down. Auburn closing in on the points record. And the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl. They've got 42 with nine plus minutes to go in the first half. And they have scored on every offensive drive so far. Their defense has also added a touchdown. Yeah, I see them breaking that record and setting it pretty high. And we saw Army drop 70 on that was Houston amazing. in this bowl season. Stidham through the hands of Slayton. Who's had a couple of long touchdowns in this game? But not, you know, and I, we talked about his ability to throw the ball downfield. The touch at times for me from Stidham is not always there. You, you, you've got to place a better ball there if you're going to be quality NFL talent. As the players are on the field right now, they're begging Gus to go for it on fourth down, and it looks like he's going to let them. There was a roar from the crowd after a third down stop, and then Auburn leaves the offense out on the field. Canella, the black belt in karate, brings it down for an Auburn first down. Great catch. That thing was zipped in there. Not going to question his strength. Stidham has a pass. Back to the air. End zone. Incomplete intended for Slate. He and Mackey were tied up. That's great coverage. I mean, they're just tussling and fighting and give the officials credit. I mean, look, his eyes are back. They're both tangled up. And I mean, where are you supposed to go? If you're DB, you're not going to run away from the football. I've got to stay in position. And I know the Auburn Tiger fans wanted that call and certainly booed the officials there. But I, and I don't normally side with officials, but I, but I think that was the right call. Stidham right now averaging 33 yards a completion. Whitlow. It sets up a third and long for Auburn. They have not been great on third downs this season. This is only the third, third down of the game for Auburn. One was previously on this drive, which tells you what the Tigers have been doing offensively. is a first down catch. Auburn continues to move the chains. Griffin King 
Yeah, this will be. Uh, it's going to be close. They're going to say just shy. So fourth and short, and Auburn leaving the offense out on the field again. And they bring in some muscle, but boy, Stidham stood him tall in the pocket. They're going to go back to the Wildcat here. Hey, he stood tall in the pocket and managed to get that throw off with pressure right in his face and threw a dart out there on the outside edge in the perfect location. That was a tough play. They go back to the Wildcat where they've had success. Whitlow pushing forward. And a second and fourth down conversion for Auburn on this drive. And what's different about the Tigers offensively today, Ahmad? Well, they scored early, number one. And, and you know, this is a team that under Gus Miles on, I think they're 43 and 10 when they score first. That's something that they weren't able to really do this year is get off to fast and hot starts. And then the second part is that that then led to confidence. And then um, they're, they're down the field plays, explosive plays, creating those. They've been spectacular at it, and they've just continued to pour it on. Play clock at two. Whitlow. And he is taken down in the backfield by Derek Barnes, a linebacker who had to move to that hybrid D-end linebacker role for this game with the injury to Lorenzo Neal. He's going to be a special player, and he's only 6'1", 240. Sophomore from Covington, Kentucky, went to Holy Cross. And listen, he can play linebacker, but today I think he's earning himself some opportunities to play at the next level by also playing defensive line. Auburn morphs into a five-wide look. Here's Davis. Ryan Davis down to the six-yard line. It brings up a third and goal. Davis, with all the catches he has this season, no receiving touchdowns. Auburn's leader in receptions for the season and for all time. And the Stidham to Davis duo has produced more catches than any other quarterback-receiver duo in Auburn history. That's impressive. Schwartz got a great block by Cox and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. One of the unsung heroes of the Auburn offense is number 27 Chandler Cox who held the block long enough for Schwartz to get in. Yeah and all you need to is just for a split second for him to catch the edge and once again I think this is a good play call you know and perfect position as Cox just controlled the defender and when you push him back like that, now it allows him to have that short edge. And when he turns the corner, Schwartz, it's very different than other players. This is DJ Knox across the 20. Anish, there were a couple of things that Tyler wanted to communicate. The first was the fact that he's written a book. It's called The Upset, and he's, his goal is to raise $1 million for cancer research through this book, with much of that going to the Jimmy V Foundation. He talked about the fact that this has given him a platform to go out and, and raise money for children that have similar cancers to the one that he have. He said that it might not help him, it might not save his life, but if it can help people down the line, then his life will have been worth it, and the inspiration that he has provided will have been worth it as well. And I also asked him about his relationship with this football team. He just said that this is a group of guys, and he pointed to David Blau and Rondale Moore, who's the same class as him, as guys that have put their arms around him, come to see him almost daily, talk to him on the phone, and really helped him through this tough time. When we talked to David Blau, David Blau told us that the 48 hours that he got to spend with Tyler Trent and the Trent family when they went down to the College Football Awards in Atlanta were some of the best 48 hours of his life just because of the fact that he got to spend the time with Tyler and talk to him about his journey and talk to him also about the fact that, that, that he has continued to fight through this entire thing. He, he's just an incredible young man, guys. I had a chance to talk to him this week, spend some time with him today. Uh, it has truly been an honor and a pleasure to, to just feel the inspiration from Tyler Trent. We have a flag on the play, and you're absolutely right, Roddy. Tyler Trent, I think, has brought out the best in so many who have been exposed to his story. There are two fouls on the play, one on each team. 
after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 60 of the offense. That's number 60's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Also after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five of the defense. That's number five's first unsportsmanlike game. Both fouls will be administered in their order of occurrence. It'll be second, third down. So the fouls on Swingler and Derek Brown. David Blau on Tyler Trent also told us that when David talked to... It's a first down. When Blau spoke to Tony Trent, Tyler's father, Tony told David Blau that, hey, Tyler's not in great health right now, but he has to be here in Nashville because he's the captain. And Tyler Trent becoming a part of this team He's touched this locker room. If you watched that Ohio State game, uh, there were Buckeye fans after that game, a lot of them, who said the cosmic forces had aligned with Purdue that day. Indeed. And, and it was hard not to pull for Purdue watching that game when you saw the resolve of, of Tyler Trent, who in 20 years has, has done more Ball than start. many of us will do in Offense a lifetime. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Another penalty on Purdue. It's Michael Mendez at right tackle. And then we saw Matt McCann get hurt earlier. And, each, and, I, and I, the, the most important part as a, as a student athlete is uh, this is moving. The, the inspiration that comes along with this is, you know, oftentimes being a, a, a former student athlete myself, you can feel like you're immortal, like you're exempt from death, from death, because you're so young and you're so vibrant. And to be able to witness a young man endure this time has been, has been has been great experience for them to be able to understand that life is so precious and valuable. As Derek Brown gets into the backfield for a sack. And you know, Anish, the other part of this is uh, the book is a way for Tyler to really see the impact that he will have long after he's gone. Many of the people who go through this. We have multiple flags at the end of the play. This is going to get ugly. Lau took a late shot and it appeared as though Marco Jones was trying to defend and stand up for his quarterback. What I was going to say, Ahmad, if you donate money to the V Foundation, every single cent goes directly to fighting cancer and cancer research. So again, v.org slash Tyler Trent if you want to donate as we now sort through the ruckus. After the play was over, late shot. unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of the offense, 15-yard penalty, it'll be fourth down. That's number six, first unsportsmanlike of the game. I think they meant to say number eight, Markel Jones. Auburn calls their second timeout of the half. There's Ryan Davis, and he takes it in the plus territory. The Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup is here in Nashville and will be awarded to the conference that has the highest winning percentage in the postseason. This is where we stand right now. Big 10, 2 and all, though not looking so good for Purdue. Big 12, 2 and all, SEC 0 and 1. Vandy losing to Baylor fun game, last though. night. Yeah, it was a fun Baylor. game. Still a lot of football left to play for the Power Five, especially the Big Ten, the SEC, the Big 12. <laughs> 49 points by Auburn matches the record for most points in a bowl game in the first half. Stidham throws it away. Ahmad, the numbers this year for Jared Stidham, pedestrian compared to last year. Yeah. So if you're an NFL scout, you watch the tape from last year, and then you watch the tape for this year where, yes, the offensive line not as experienced. It's had its struggles. The running game not the same without Pettyway and Carrion Johnson. <laughs> he had some dudes. Lost some receivers before the season. Now, how do you evaluate a guy like Stidham? I think he's got great talent. and I think you've got to put him in the right system. 
and highlight his assets. And his assets are his throwing abilities, which is not a bad thing. I, like I said earlier, his, his short game and intermediate touch, I, I think it still needs to improve. But the deep ball is as good as anybody coming out in this class. And, and I think he's proven that he can play at a high level. Uh, some of the games last year that he was able to perform in and to be excellent, he shows me that the kid has enough moxie and control over his game to be a factor and to be a game changer. Uh, this year, the one thing that I would say is I didn't necessarily see him elevate the players around him as much as he did a season ago, and that would be my one concern. On third down, four-man twist by Purdue. Stidham steps up over the middle. And that is caught by Seth Williams, another first down by Auburn. And the Tigers move the chains. Purdue has yet to stop the Auburn offense. Every offensive drive has resulted in a touchdown for Auburn. Three hundred yards passing for Stidham in the first half. Looking for more. Slayton, he's got it, his third touchdown of the first half. And as you watch film of this Boilermaker defense, Antonio Blackman has been a guy, because Kenneth Major and Kaysen have played well opposite of him, he's been a guy that they've, they've really picked on. And um, they found a matchup today, the Tigers have, that they find that they have found favorable, and they've gone to it. And to the credit of, of Slayton, he's caught those deep balls. Not only has he created that separation, he's finished those plays. That one even having to come back to the football and make a play. But <laughs> this offense is on fire. They're stretching the field. You know, and if you're Blackman right there, once, once he gets up on your toes, you try to do a good job of cutting him off. Just look back a tad bit too soon in my opinion. If you can't touch him, our the great defensive back coach who's now at Stanford, who was at the University of Texas while I was there, he'd always say, if you can't touch him, don't look back. That's a bad play right there, and you want to look back just as you're a converting into a comfortable position where you're in his pocket, and he wasn't there yet, and that small fraction was the reason he didn't break that play up. Slayton today, three catches, 160 yards. All three catches have gone for touchdowns. Wow. The 56 points by Auburn, a record for this bowl game. We're still in the first half. And the 56 first half points, a record for the most points in the first half of any bowl game. Yeah, I, I really have no words here. And, and if you're a Tigers fan, I mean, like I said, they're, they're, this is great to be happy about and putting an exclamation point on a season that was iffy at best by their standards, right? But then you still got to face the reality of the question marks. Are you going to be able to run the football in the SEC? Who's going to replace Stidham at quarterback? Who's played great today? And, and, and I think that's where, if you're Gus, you, you've really got to answer those two questions headed into the offseason. Knox is tackled shy of the 20, and it continues to get chippy between these two teams. There's no flat there. Surprising. No flag on the play. I mean, I thought this was just a good forceful tackle here. Ahmad, you look at the scoreboard. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be nearly impossible for Purdue to come back. They can't even stop Auburn right now. So, if you're the Tigers, looking ahead to the second half. Do we see a lot of Malik Willis and Joey Gatewood, maybe even a Cord Sandberg? Do you almost begin the quarterback audition for 2019 in the second half of this bowl game? That's tricky. Only a Stidham will allow it because it's his last game. But yes, to your point, and then think about this red shirt. Well, even if you've got some guys that are suited up who um, you wanted to see in some live game action, another flag on the play, you could throw them out there. If they play, if this will be their fourth game playing or anything under, and they can still maintain that red shirt gear. That's key. Offside, defense number 55. Five yard penalty, replay first down. Penalties mount for Purdue. That's, or rather, Auburn. That's TD Moultrie. 
who's one of those young players you're saying who's getting some minutes today because Nick Coe is out, who normally plays that buck position. And they like they like Moultrie. They like what he brings to the table. And um, you then you have Big Cat Bryan, who's also uh, rotating in that role, who has a touchdown on the day. Markel Jones to the outside. Stiff arms his way out of bounds, driven out by Igbin Pagani. First down, Purdue. Less than two minutes to go in an opening half that has been completely and utterly dominated by Auburn. Jones again. Fighting through tacklers for a nice gain. Eventually brought down by Russell. Markel Jones, a young man majoring in professional flight technology. Wow. Studying to become a pilot. David Blau vouched for him, said he'd get in a plane with Markel. Rondell Moore, juggling act. And he's to the 45, a first down. Seventh yeah. catch for more. And these David Blau told us that, that he'd get in a plane with Markel Jones because he's a much better flyer than, than David Blau is. <laughs> David said, uh, the first time I got in, I got out and my, my shirt was soaked with sweat. They couldn't even get it off of me. <laughs> Herdman stretches over midfield. There is Markel Jones. Last time he was in a plane August 1st, right before training camp, taking classes in personal finance and courses in commercial flight training. Get those 100 hours to get your pilot's license. Super cool, man. First down, Purdue in Auburn territory. Final 35 seconds of this opening half. Pressure from Auburn, Blau runs. And slides down. He's going to be shy of the marker. So that keeps the clock running. Purdue has two timeouts, and they use one of them. They're second and a half. Please reset the game clock to 21 seconds. Now, for a lot of people, watching who maybe didn't pay extra close attention during the regular season but remember Purdue from beating Ohio State you, you got to be thinking to yourself which version of the Boilermakers are we seeing today because now this looks nothing like the team that we saw play inspired football against the Buckeyes and pull off a convincing win that was the biggest upset of the 2018 season. Two things I would I would say could potentially be the theory of that is number one, it's just, this is a young team. You know, absolutely. Uh, if outside of the offensive line, you're looking at a, a lot of players that have the opportunity to return. And, and in addition to that, I, I think the force of Auburn uh, with the way that Auburn played today is the reason why this has been so lopsided. Wow, in trouble, taken down. Deshaun Davis, the heart and soul of this Auburn defense. 5'11 middle linebacker. Yeah, it'll be 60 seconds in length. Another timeout by Purdue. Davis makes this defense go. Kevin Steele said, he doesn't need me. He is a defensive coordinator on the field. And Davis is from Mobile, or I'm sorry. Intellect, but also uh, that type of production. Fourth down for Purdue, final second is of this first half from the Auburn 45. There's pressure. Blau's pass is tipped, and Auburn takes over on downs. And Ahmad, Auburn facing a little bit of a dilemma here. If they don't score on this drive with seven seconds, it would be the only drive in the first half in which the Auburn offense did not find the end zone. It, it's been it's been a hot day for them, and, and they've been fantastic. And um, Purdue, on the other hand, they, they've got they've got to go in at halftime, <laughs> and and somewhere you know, and and as Tyler Trent is looking on right now, you you've got to find some type of inspiration and motivation. And I'd look to him to be the reason, right, to come back out here and 
this season is all for naught. You still got to come back out here and fight. There are fans in the stands, and you've got families at home, and you're carrying on their legacy. What a first half for Auburn. Almost 400 yards of back. He wants to see his guys really respond. So really a tale of two coaches. Gus Malzahn really playing at coin. Jeff Brom looking for his guys to respond. First play of the second half. It's a handoff to DJ Knox. And a strong run by Knox to the 37-yard line. A gain of 14. About if you're Jeff Brom, I mean, what do you tell your team? Give him the score. I think this is also an interview for jobs in the spring and in fall. I want to see how you're going to fight. This is some adversity, some serious adversity they're facing right now. Who are going to be the players that lay down? Who are going to be the ones that stand up and protect the brand? Nobody open. Blau has to throw it away. Auburn has manhandled Purdue's offensive line. We've seen them get pressure on the quarterback, rushing four most of the time. Well, then they're that good. <laughs> and and this, this guy, Jeff Brom, he knew that headed in. He knew this was a task, and so did Blau. Uh, the reality of it is, is this offensive line, um, despite them having so much experience here, um, these are guys that, that have struggled today uh, blocking and protecting their quarterback. Rondell Moore to the outside. And cut off by Auburn. It's a loss. It sets up third and long. Purdue three for nine on third down. And they've done a good job of containing him. Uh, they really have. I mean, he, he hasn't had that that uh, game-changing, game-breaking play that we're used to Rondell having. And I think part of it is is the team's speed for this defense. And then on top of that, they played very sound. They've stayed at home. They haven't allowed the, the motion behind the line of scrimmage or any of his movement to confuse them. They've, sit, they've said exactly where they're supposed to, and then they've tackled him when they get their hands on him. Downfield for Zico, too high, covered well. Roger McCreary, the freshman, the defensive back for Auburn, and it's fourth down. Purdue will punt. More pressure in Blau's face. It's been a rough day for him. As that time, T.D. Moultrie once again coming off of the edge right into his face. And, you know, that clock as a quarterback, when you're trying to throw the football and you know you've got to go downfield when you've got a third and long situation, uh, that's that that anxiousness that comes along with knowing that you may have players in your face oftentimes affects the way you throw the football and your accuracy. Choppers punt. Fair catch signal by Ryan Davis. Auburn closing in on the record for most points by an SEC team in any bowl game. The record is wow. 61. Alabama against Syracuse back in 53. The record for most points in a bowl game, 70. It's been done a couple of times. Remember, West Virginia did it to Clemson. Mm -hmm. Army did it to Houston this bowl season. Question is, how long do you play that guy? You know, I, I don't know. And you've got some young quarterbacks that you could also throw in. Malik Willis is sitting on the sideline, and he's been the backup all year. Stidham, little trouble with the snap. It's Martin. Strong run by Cam Martin on first down. Auburn averaged 11 yards of play in the first 30 minutes. And guys, I asked Gus Malzahn about just what Ahmad said a second ago. How long do you play these first stringers until you start to rotate guys in? And Gus Malzahn said, look, the starters are coming out in the second half, and I want to see them establish, reestablish this game and reestablish what we had going in the first half. And then we'll look at rotating some other guys in. So I'd expect to see Stidham for the better part of the third quarter. Martin on first down. You know, and Gus thinks that this offensive line is really on the brink of being something special. They've struggled. They've taken their lumps, um, particularly um, they were in the ball game, and he felt like they were starting to lean in on Alabama, and then that third quarter, Alabama exploded. And so it's from those things that he believes that next year this group as a unit is going to be one of the best in the SEC, and if they're one of the best in the SEC, they're going to be one of the best in the country. Here's Davis, look to throw, did he catch it? No, incomplete. It brings up third down. Gus Malzahn's best teams at Auburn.
strong, elite offensive yep. lines and great ball carriers, yep. even if the ball carrier was a quarterback. And they just haven't had that, but it really starts up front, and he was the first to acknowledge that the interior of the line has had some issues. They feel they're a little better now with Caleb Kim back at center. But he does feel, as you said, the O-line could be pretty good next year. A lot of returning power on that unit. Wide open Schwartz. And Schwartz brought down inside the Purdue 35 by Thieneman. A gain of 33, another explosive play by this Auburn offense. Just continues, and that was a great decision by Stidham. He recognized where the soft spot was in the coverage, went to it. Schwartz, that'll be a name to remember. <laughs> Only a freshman from Florida, but this kid can flat out fly. Malik Miller into the game for Auburn. Miller gets the call. And he is dropped at the 30 by the freshman, Jalen Alexander. You mentioned the speed of Schwartz. Set the junior world record in the 100-meter dash. Won the Florida State Class 2A 100-meter and 200-meter in record that times. Is rolling right there now. Got a silver medal. <laughs> 2018 Gatorade National Boys Track and Field Athlete of the Year. Oh and Auburn knew it was getting speed, but sometimes that speed doesn't translate onto the football field. It has with Schwartz. Now, what you're saying is oftentimes fast guys are soft, and you're absolutely right. He's not a soft guy. He can handle the pounding that even comes along with SEC play. There's another guy with speed, Sean Shivers, and the Iron Bowl. He broke off a long touchdown against Alabama only to have it called back. And Gus Malzahn told us that really changed the tenor of the game. <laughs> but the hardest part is spotting this kid. He's 5'7". So it, it's one thing for him to be fast, but then as a defender, you, you, you don't even see him. And then the next thing you know is, shoo, he's right by you. So um, that speed, I think, translates very well. And this was something that the Purdue staff knew going into the game, that this was going to be a problem with all of these uh, players with this dynamic speed on the football field. Wildcat formation on third and short. It's Whitlow to take the snap. Stidham was split wide. And Whitlow powers across for a first down. Three touchdowns in the first half for Jatarvius Whitlow. Receiving touchdown, two rushing touchdowns. He was another track star from a small high school in Alabama, not too far from Auburn. Champion in the long jump, triple jump, 200 and 400 meter. He's got good size, too, at six foot, 220 pounds. He's, he's going to be a force. Shivers back in there for Auburn. And Shivers gets the call. Down at the 20, Derek Barnes on the stop. Auburn in the first half had eight possessions. Seven ended with a touchdown. The last one ended with a kneel down right before halftime. I mean, is there another word for dominance? Because I, I need, I mean, I'll find it. Uh, because that's, that's what it is. It, it's, it's just been lopsided. Shivers. He picks up a first down for Auburn. Barnes brings him down. We talked about it in the first half. Now the temperature's been turned up on Gus Malzahn down at Auburn. Through the first 30 minutes, does a lopsided result in this game change any of that going forward? I'm not sure, because uh, the climate and the culture, I, I think people who are following this knew that there was some type of a conflict between him and his offensive coordinator, two offensive coordinators in three seasons. So that also trickles on down to the players. And then, you know, I think that seat is still going to be a little bit warm just because the expectations um, that the Tiger fans have, and rightfully so, they want to win championships and titles. And I think that's the only way to cool it down. Malik Miller to move the chains. And Auburn will get a big test early next year against Auburn or against uh, Oregon 
That's a Jerry World Indeed. game. And that's a game that Justin Herbert will play in after announcing yep. that he's going to come back to Oregon. So you're going to have probably the number one quarterback in the country coming out next year playing in that game against an Auburn team that's going to be breaking in a new quarterback. So that will be a huge test. Shivers up the middle, brought down by Bailey. Second and goal. Roddy, it's who that quarterback is going to be is the mystery. Yeah. They've got a very highly touted freshman coming in in Bo Nix. His dad was an Auburn legend. Yep. And that was the great Patrick Nix. You've got Malik Willis, who's been the backup here to Stidham for a couple of years. They really like Joey Gatewood. When we talked to Coach Malzahn yesterday, the first two names out of his mouth or Willis and Gatewood, and again, you've got Knicks, you've got Court Sandberg, a former minor league baseball player who's much older than the rest of the group. Little misdirection, Ryan Davis into the end zone for a touchdown. And I think if you're Knicks, I've always said this, if you're a young player and you're going to come in and impact the game. You've got to be a lot like Juan Delmore was for the Boilermakers. First and foremost, find your niche. Find what you're the best on the team at. Second point is be hungry. You know, don't be satisfied by maybe moving up the depth chart or performing well in one game. And the last part of that, right, is to be humble. Nobody wants to play with a guy who's haughty and who thinks he's the, the world's best. Stay humble, and that's how you impact the stat sheet. That's how you impact your team, and that's how you win jobs early on as a young player. And, and, and I, I think he'll have an opportunity to do that if he does those things. Clearly came to this game hungry and motivated. That kick out of bounds, so Purdue will get it at the 35. And I think a lot, a little bit of that. Kick out of bounds on a kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. Uh, last year's outcome, you know, coming into the bowl season, expecting University of Central Florida to, to not be all the hype, what the, all the hype was about. and. And we saw the outcome there. And, and Malzahn said he just played a little bit of that game for his team. He didn't say anything about it. He just played a little bit for him to let them know, like, this could happen. And they've come out here today, and they have played as good as you can. And, and this has been a commanding effort for sure. Markel Jones. Auburn still coming strong defensively. That's a loss. Dinson, the safety, made the stop. A couple of more bowl games today, West Virginia and Syracuse. Iowa State Wazoo, it's the Camping World Bowl, and then later the Valero Alamo Bowl. Not playing for the Mountaineers. Left tackle, Yadni Kajust, and starting quarterback, Will Greer. Incomplete intended for Hopkins. We have seen that in bowl season over the last several years. Key players with NFL draft hopes sitting bowl games out. It is of note that Auburn has every eligible draftable player suiting up in this game. Hashtag respect is what I'm going to say here because as a player, listen man, even if you're not, you know, you can, you can come into this game. It's a nice ball and one of the, the only explosive plays today that uh, Rondell Moore has had in, as Purdue is trying to get something going here offensively. But to your point, right, I remember my senior year or my freshman year watching Ricky Williams play in the game. And this is back when you didn't skip ball games, of course. But, I mean, here's a guy who just won a Heisman. He's the best player in college football, hands down, and he plays. Listen, I, we weren't playing in anything but the Cotton Bowl. It, we, it didn't mean that we were going to go to – we weren't playing for a national title. We were playing for respect. And we were playing for the guys next to us, as that was going to be called – pass interference it appears on on Jamil Dean but I don't like it I think you let your guys down and I know the rebuttal is hey these guys this is a business decision etc listen pass interference defense number 12 15 yards from the previous spot automatic first down I, I also my rookie my second year in Buffalo I played with a guy named Willis McGahey who has this god-awful injury in the ball game still drafted in the first round so I think players that look at Jalen uh, from the Cowboys. It, it, so I think there are examples to prove that even if you do get injured, you can still be a first-round draft pick. Hot topics around college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. 
Now the counter argument is coaches bail on their teams all the time during bowl season when they take another job. Rondell Moore, he's tripped up. Anish, I don't even think that's the most relevant uh, counter argument. I, I just feel like the point of these student athletes going to college is to prepare them for life after college. Usually we do that through education for most of these guys, but some of them have the unique opportunity to do it through football. So when you get to the point where you're one game away from getting the type of money that will set your family up for generations to come if you manage it wisely, why wouldn't you take care of that risk? If you had, you, you, Ahmad, you talked about a business decision. If you had an actual business and you could eliminate the risk to get to millions of dollars, you would do that. So, I, you know, it's, it's to each his own. The, 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 the decision that, that the guys for Auburn made today, I commend them for it, but I can't hate on guys that decide to eliminate that risk. You talked about Jalen Smith for the Cowboys. He was a projected top five pick before he got hurt, and then he slides to the second round. Even with the great career he's had so far and the second contract that he'll get, he'll never get that money back that he missed from sliding from a one to a two. He threw risk management your way, come on. <laughs> at George on third Tech down, Curry. a draw by Blau, and the fifth-year senior coasting into the end zone. Great timing on the play call there. Jeff Brown feeling that the pressure was coming, and he had the perfect play call in response to the pressure that Auburn brought. As David Blau showing his athletic ability there. And this is a design run, no doubt about it. This was set up, called in advance, expecting them to bring the heat. Think of what Purdue sang on Wednesday. We're doing it for Tyler Trent, part of the refrain. If you're just joining us, Trent, young man battling bone cancer, made the trip to Nashville today, is the honorary captain for Purdue. His story has gone national, made headlines during the Ohio State game when he predicted a Purdue win. The Boilermakers won. Trent had a real rough week leading up to that game against the Buckeyes, but was able to come to that game, game dated. A sensational story on him that hit all the emotional nerves and Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Ursay allowed Trent and his family to use his private plane to come to Nashville and heading to the sidelines right now Jared Stidham and it appears he is done as an Auburn Tiger next stop for him the NFL Auburn turns to Malik Willis to take over at quarterback, a two-year backup to Stidham, and he'll hand it off on second down. And he said, just wanted to touch again on the Tyler Trent story that you were talking about. When I talked to the family, they were so appreciative of what the Colts had done to get Tyler here, and the fact that he's detailed his entire journey in this book, The Upset, which has come out for pre-orders today at, at tylertrentbook.com. It's just been a, a fantastic story. And his goal to raise a million dollars for cancer research, much of that going to the Jimmy V Foundation, just has to be commended. His spirit has been such a big part of this college football season. Yeah, no question. Shivers can't get away from Bailey. And Auburn will have to punt for the first time today. That's just great defense. And the one thing you like about Marcus Bailey when you watch him on film, his football IQ, he's intelligent, and he's also a guy that doesn't miss many tackles. Um, he still tackles the old school way, wrapping up those arms, driving his feet. And that was a fine play there from the junior linebacker from Columbus, Ohio. 
he also doesn't miss many points. Going to stay in Justin Herbert. We still haven't heard from Daniel Jones at Duke. We haven't heard from Dwayne Haskins whether or not they'll go. Most people expect them to. But if those two decide to stay as well, he could steadily slide up and be potentially a first-round pick. Caught again by Moore, his 11th reception, pushing his FBS leading total to 114. Wow. According to our own Todd McShay, here are the top quarterback prospects in this year's draft. Again, Haskins has yet to say publicly, Will Greer will not play in the upcoming Camping World Bowl. That is following our game. Knox. And a quagmire there, tackled by Deshaun Davis. And Davis and Stidham will both play in the Senior Bowl in Mobile next month. Yeah. Another opportunity in front of scouts. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to this. We've seen a, a few of these top quarterbacks, including Will Greer. We had him twice this year. And, and I think if I was comparing him to a guy like that, and that's what will be happening if you're sitting in a, a boardroom somewhere as an NFL team, uh, the diversity of the game for me will depend on. Ball start, offense number nine, five yard penalty, third down. But what type of system you're going to. You know, he's going to be a better fit, uh, I believe, in different systems. So it just really depends on who needs a quarterback, number one, because we saw last year a lot of the teams that needed quarterbacks took them in the top part of the draft. I don't think there's a tremendous need this year. I think there may be a handful of teams that are even in the bargain, or even bargaining for a quarterback in the first round. So that is number one for me. And then I think it depends on how he tests and, and how, for a quarterback, how he is in interviews, uh, his, his knowledge, drop here um, as he comes out of the backfield from DJ Knox. But we know, you know, that GMs, coaches are going to sit him down. They're going to put him on a board. They're going to see how well he thinks um, the game through. And it's not just about that big arm he's carrying around on his right shoulder, which he does have. He's got all the arm talent in the world. This is now about can you lead our team and can you take us and help lead us from maybe a four, four victory team to eight or nine to get us in the mix of making the playoffs and then carrying us over from there. How do NFL personnel and scouts determine that? Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's very dicey. <laughs> it's hard to do and um, you, can be, you can be right and you can be wrong. And I, I think a lot of it determines how well the player comes in and how hungry he is and how determined he is to be great at that level. You've got to come in and, you know, listen, and I told her, I said, I think it's the same way you make an impact here. We were talking about Bo Nix and what he needs to do to come here. As a professional, you have to do the exact same thing. Look, I was an undrafted free agent, and I knew from day one I had to play special teams. I had to be a hard worker. I had to do those things. For quarterbacks, what do you need? You've got to be a great leader, and you've got to be able to produce points, period. Protect the football. Simple things like that, if you can show them you can do that throughout camp, they're going to be more inclined to call you the guy and give you an opportunity um, to make their team and to, to impact the team. You know, Ahmad, it, it'll be interesting because there's a lot of teams in the league now that have aging, really good quarterbacks that don't have a succession plan in place. You know, you think of maybe the Packers or the Steelers or even the, the New York Giants that aren't picking up at the top of the draft, but that may take a guy like Stidham and sit him for a year or two while their quarterback ages and then have a guy that they can roll into after. So that's another option. Meanwhile, it's Malik Willis's show for now, the Auburn backup quarterback. And he will be part of the Derby next spring and perhaps next fall if it stretches out that far. Gus Malzahn told us he's already given thought to who will play quarterback. Auburn was one of the schools in on Kelly Bryant. Bryant eventually chose Missouri. Yeah. Bryant, the former Clemson QB. That's Shivers tackled in the backfield. You know what I like about Willis? is he brings a new dynamic to this offense. And, you know, with Stidham, you weren't going to get into your RPO package, your run pass options, where your quarterback is a tremendous rushing threat. Willis is that guy. And just naturally, he, I don't think he throws the ball or nor is he as developed as that man. However, there are things that you can do if you're Gus Miles on in this offense that will be different if he is the signal caller. Also, being the backup, he's going to be the person that gets the first shot in the spring. Bo Nix will be in in January, so he'll have an opportunity to compete. But I think it's Willis' jobs to lose. Yeah, it's interesting. He's kind of got more of that Nick Marshall look in terms of the dynamic runner that can break a long one. He played in Atlanta where I live, so I got a chance to see him a couple times in high school. And when he gets in the open field, he is dangerous. Uh, 
timeout, Auburn with the play clock running down. Now here's what Gus Malzahn has to work with next year. You'll have Malik not be at stake when they play in the bowl game. Malik Willis to the air, moving the pocket, directing traffic. Now he'll take off and run. And as we talked about before the last break, that is the dimension that he brings. Right now, more of a runner than a passer. Yeah, you don't have that particular play call in your book. <laughs> you know, it's not something that, that you throw in if you're Gus. It, the reality of it is, is you've got to be very instinctual and then have um, the, the ability to do that. And Willis does. But what I do like as he was rolling out there, he didn't take his, all, his eyes off downfield. Oftentimes when you've got a guy that is very athletic and can run, their first instinct and reaction is to run. That time there, keeping his eyes downfield, which I think held defenders downfield, which allowed him to have the space to pick up the first down. Nice run there by Shivers. Freshman from Fort Lauderdale, sprinter speed. His cousin, Harry Adams, was actually an All-American sprinter at Auburn. And now, that was one of the names the Purdue coaches threw at us. We didn't see Shivers a lot in the first half, but you know, that touchdown run that was called back against Alabama really seemed to have the attention of Nick Holt and the Purdue defensive coaches. Yeah, and so in Gus, too. I thought Gus was going to lose it, and, and definitely. But you know why they, those types of players scare you, Anish, is because all they need is one touch to change the course of a game. On second down, Willis on the zone read. Malik Willis erupts wow. for a big run. Another Auburn first down. 30 yards on the play. Tigers have more than 500 yards of total offense today, and they are seven points away from tying the bowl record for points. Not just this bowl, any bowl. With Malik playing like that, it's going to be hard for this Purdue defense to stop the Tigers from getting in the end zone another time. There is Shivers dropped from the ankles by Derek Barnes. Another first down for Auburn. More than 550 yards of total offense for the Tigers. That is a Music City Bowl record. 63 points, a Music City Bowl record. The 56 points in the first half. The most points in an opening half by any team in any bowl. Not guys, much for Shivers. You know what I thought was interesting yesterday when we were talking to defensive coordinator for Purdue, Nick Holt. He said, uh, yeah, I was at USC, and we come down to Fayetteville and play in Arkansas, and Gus Malzahn was the offensive coordinator, calling his first game as an offensive coordinator. And USC, when I say they took it to him, he said they had about 10 first rounders according <laughs> to, according to Gus Malzahn back in 2006. And that guy right there, Nick Holt, completely annihilated um, the Arkansas team and now you come back in a very different day from the first meeting between these two offensive and defensive minds. And that was not the right decision by Willis. Purdue got into the backfield and sets up a third down. Yeah, but I think it was the safe decision because oftentimes in that match point, and Roddy can tell you this, coming from Georgia Tech and playing in the triple option, quarterbacks and running backs have to be in sync when you're in the mesh. Because if he pulls it there and it's a fumble, now it's a really silly play, and you've turned the ball over in your red zone. Yeah, you're right, Ahmad. And it was a good decision, actually, because Purdue had a guy coming off the edge for the dive man as well as the quarterback. So either one of them are going to get hit. And if I'm the quarterback, uh, both of us are going to get hit. I'm going to hand it to you so you get hit over me. <laughs> Sounds like you've been on the other end of that. Oh, quarterbacks are always hanging out to drop. <laughs> Shivers looking for running room, not much there. It's fourth down, and Auburn will send on the field goal team. Or will they? I would think, right? 63-14? Doesn't appear that way. 
offense still out on the field. Well, Coach Malzahn doesn't look like he's signaling anything. He's walking out on the field. This will either be a run the clock down and call a timeout and maybe decide it or, or possibly they're, they're subbing, so maybe they will go for it. A deal like this here, given the score? I'm not sure I understand it. Now they'll go for it. It's a run. It's Schwartz. Play as David Blau comes off the field to applause, and rightfully so. This young man has seen the highs and lows of college football and has battled through them to come back to have a very impactful senior year. Blau got a nice hug from Jeff Brom as he came to the sideline. Markel Jones gets the carry. The new quarterback is the redshirt freshman from California, Nick Sipe. And for David Blau, a young man who got engaged earlier this year, has had ups and downs throughout his career. He started, then he was benched through 29 interceptions his first two seasons. <laughs> oh my goodness. Had a chance to transfer out of the program last year. He got hurt last year. Elijah Sindelar took over, really shined down the stretch. Sindelar opened this season as the starter. Then Sindelar got hurt. Blau had another opportunity. Jeff Brom told him, be aggressive, cut it loose. Had a huge game early in the season and a loss to Missouri as Jones is taken down Outstanding. by K.J. Britt, who might be the middle linebacker after Deshaun Davis is gone. But Blau stayed the course, and he told us that you know, Jeff Brom always told him, you'll have another opportunity here. That game against Missouri back in September, 572 yards, a school record. They come back and they beat Boston College. They have the win against Ohio State. He was terrific that game, and his season ends with all conference honors. Amazing. 25 to eight touchdown interception entering today. And he'll have a chance to stick on somebody's roster in the NFL. I like him. Fair catches signaled for and made and just a shy of midfield. 7.58 Wood, a freshman from St. Augustine, Florida. He'll have a chance to be the guy next year Highly touted recruit coming out of high school. Much larger guy than Malik Willis standing. They've, they've got him listed there at 6'5". Tall kid, long, rangy, who's also mobile enough to put pressure on the defense. Yeah, he's got some size, had a thumb injury. That's the luxury of the red shirt rule is Gatewood runs it into Purdue territory. This season, you're allowed to play up to four games and still be able to redshirt as we get a flag. Really like that rule. I think it's fair to the student athletes who oftentimes sit on the opposite side of, of what's fair. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 44, 15 yard penalty to the end of the run, automatic first down. That's number 44's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Anthony Watts, sophomore from Houston. Been a tough day for this Purdue defense, but you take this game, you almost put it in a vacuum because even in their losses, this is a Purdue team that has been competitive all season long. They had the win against Ohio State. They beat Iowa and Boston College teams that were ranked at the time. And if you remember where this program was before Jeff Brom took over, it was one of the worst Power Five programs. They were in the gulags of the Big Ten. <laughs> nice word, my man. And they have, at the very least, moved up into that middle class. And that Ohio State win was not just big in recruiting and the national stage and having the spotlight on your program and then taking advantage of it. But Jeff Brom told us it gave his team and his coaching staff confidence that hey, we may not have the best players at every position, but we can beat the elite teams. And that's what gave Purdue fans and this Purdue team supposedly confidence coming into this Auburn game. And it made Purdue a trendy upset pick for a lot of folks. Game obviously went in a completely different direction. Yes, it did. And, I, and like I said earlier, I think more of that has to do with the Tigers and their readiness to play today 
for sure. They came out here on fire and were certainly motivated to be in the ball game. C.J. Tolbert. It'll bring up a third and about a yard and a half. And Ahmad, you talked about the Auburn Tigers' motivation for this bowl game. You know, a lot's been talked about with Gus Malzahn and, and the season that he had. And, and I mean, you mentioned the fact that, that most of his losses are to top 20 teams. This is a tough conference in the SEC. And, yeah, but those and fans. Malzahn told us, but no, you're absolutely right. Those fans, they demand success. But Coach Malzahn clearly has the attention of these guys. He got them ready to play this game, and, and they've showed it. It'll bring up fourth down. Now, this was a team, again, a season ago. They beat Georgia and they beat Alabama. And as a two-loss team, had they beaten Georgia in the SEC championship, would have been in the college football playoff and probably would have been one of the favorites to win it. I mean, they had that kind of season. And so there were expectations. Then you go beat Washington to open the year, a team that's playing in the Rose Bowl. You know, coincidentally enough, you got two teams today that have wins against yeah. the Rose Bowl participants. <laughs> now that ups the ante. Gatewood keeps it on the zone read. And Auburn goes for it on fourth down, picks up a first down. Four and a half to play in regulation. If the Tigers do score here and convert the PAT, they would tie the record for points in a bowl game. Post-game trophy presentation for this game can be seen on the ESPN app. It is immediately following the game. It's brought to you by Capital One. Gorgeous December afternoon here in Nashville, Tennessee, the country music capital of the world. Dropped by Matthew Hill, forward pass incomplete. Third down. Today's Capital One player of the game, Jared Stidham, in his final collegiate game. 15 of 21, 373 yards, five touchdowns. What a way to go out. A third of your passes go for a touchdown. And in those scoring drives, several of them were under 40 seconds. I'm not even a minute, just 40 seconds. Uh, this, his ability to stretch the field today um, was on full display and it's one of the best parts of his game and he certainly proved that to the Boilermakers and all of the viewers and everybody here in attendance. Tolbert on third down gets a couple it sets up fourth down. A couple of the players looking toward the sideline. Last time down at this end, Auburn ran a speed sweep toward the boundary, and Purdue took over on downs. Going empty here, fourth down, up 63-14. And Gatewood will run. Reaching for the end zone, and he's going to be marked down at the one-yard line. First and goal, Auburn. That was a quick twitch. I mean, it's a good decision, but the burst, a large man. And you see why people have called him the next Cam Newton, and I know that is, whoa, Nelly, hold back with that one. But the point I'm making is, you know, you, you can see that he's, he's athletic, he's long, he's rangy, 
and all of those things, I don't care who you are, when you come into a university like this where you have um, great players like Cam Newton that are part of your history and, and legacy, you're going to look for that great player. But that was, that was spectacular indeed there on that fourth down to really show just how well this kid can move and run. Tolbert straight ahead. And no signal. Second and goal. Down prior to the ball coming loose. And if they don't review this, the reason is it's, there's what's called competitive effect. And if the officials feel a replay review given the score and the situation would not be warranted. In this case, it really wouldn't matter either way. They would not review it. And I think that's why, if you're wondering why the play is not reviewed, competitive effect likely taking place. Down, you, you go for it. On fourth down. There's two schools of thought here. One is, well, Auburn's playing its second and third stringers who are out there. Why not let them play? The other side of it is, Purdue still has many of its starters in the game. I mean, how much more dominating can you be? I understand. At this point? I understand. 